your new home for podcasts and original music. The Sagnif One Radio Network. are taking on the number 21 Texas Longhorns. I'm still wondering when they're going to be back. Sam Ellen just said they were going to be back like three years ago. Um, just comes to mind on that list that you're like, hmm, like th- this. They, they could they could shock the world. Nathan, 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 what? You want this? Hold Nathan, on. Nathan, 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 Nathan. Wait a minute. Stop this. Yeah. Skip. Hold on. How, how, uh, how are we looking at this? This Is this a walk off or is this going to be like a like the Florida game? Bam, I'm about three touchdowns. Here we go. Get your popcorn ready. Well, what's the big thing? Hello, gang. Hey there, and how's everybody doing? It's your guy, Mr. Fingers, coming to you from Zach Niff Central. Hope you had a great weekend. Happy Halloween to each and every one of you. Hope you all go out and be safe. Have Get all the goodies and the candy, and I'm going to start over because that just doesn't make any sense. Uh, Hey, gang, how you doing? It's your guy, Mr. Fingers, coming to you live from Zach Niff Central. Happy Halloween, one and all. It has been an absolutely crazy, crazy NCAA football season so far this weekend. No exception. Here is your week nine review. Uh, I, this week, we're just going to really talk about the week nine rundown in the SEC. Uh, not even the week nine rundown in the SEC. We're just going to run through. Crap. See? Did it again. All right. Here we go. Hey, gang. How's everybody doing? It's your guy, Mr. Fingers, coming to you from Zag Niff Central. Happy Halloween. It is almost November. The year is almost done. The NCAA 2021 season has been an absolutely wild roller coaster ride. This week has been no exception whatsoever. Here is, ladies and gentlemen, your top 10 review for week nine. We're going to just go ahead and get this thing started. You know where my loyalties lie. I'm not even going to lie to you. There it is right there. Go dogs. Uh, a lot, there was a lot of smack talk. I belong to a lot of groups on social media. There was a lot of smack talk about get ready for the Gators to hand the dogs their first loss. Yada, 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 yada. And at the end of the day, it uh, turned out exactly how we expected it to. Dogs reign supreme, 34-7. to seven. The defense was phenomenal, as always. There were a few uh, problems on offense. Stetson, uh, Stetson had a couple of miscues with a couple of interceptions, but we were able to recover nicely. And, of course, the kicker to this game, that incredible second quarter where underneath the two-minute mark, you had a defensive defensive fumble recovery, which led to a cook touchdown from the one yard line. Then you had, um, oh my God! Then we kicked the ball off, and then you had the pick six, which led to a touchdown. And that's what a pick six is. But you guys knew that anyway. Sorry, guys, I haven't had enough of this yet. And no, it's not alcohol, it's just caffeine. So you guys shush. Um, and then it, it was just a phenomenal 21 points in the last two minutes of the second quarter, which basically sealed the deal. The offense laid the clamps down. We did add one more touchdown at the end of the game. Zamir White breaking off a nice touchdown run. Glad to see Zeus get over 100 yards in the game. Zeus is really playing lights out ball this year. Um and there, there's nothing to say there. The defense did the defense did what the defense always does, and the junkyard dogs reign supreme. They maintain their number one ranking in this week's AP poll. Number two, Cincinnati. Uh, the Bearcats kind of got by in a little bit of a squeaker, y'all. I mean, they won, but they weren't dominant. And this is against Tulane. Um, 31-12. The game was a lot closer than the score indicated, but as it is, Cincinnati still undefeated, still looking good. Desmond Ritter still in the Heisman discussion, maybe not a favorite, but still in the Heisman discussion. So Cincinnati still holding on to their number two ranking. 
Number three, Alabama had a bye. And uh, they maintain their number three ranking. They're back in action this coming weekend. Um, o- OU, the Sooners. Um, you've seen me, Sean, and now Colin, who has joined the at this weekend SEC football family. Um, you've seen us talk about Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams is a phenomenal player. Everybody keeps wondering when is he going to have that game? When is he going to have that game? You know, every every uh, uh, prodigy that comes into college football, that comes into the pros, that he plays at the high school level. Everybody's like, when is he going to have that game, that setback game? Well, he hasn't had it just yet, ladies and gentlemen. We're now uh, three and a half games in. Caleb Williams is still absolutely phenomenal. The Heisman buzz is getting bigger. He went uh, 23 of 30 for 402 yards and six touchdowns. This was the Oklahoma offense that I have been saying for several weeks needed to show up. This was the Oklahoma offense that I have been saying for the last few weeks needed to show up. This is the Oklahoma offense that I've been saying for the last three weeks needed to start showing up. They came out. They put their foot on the gas. They did not let up until the game was over. Final score, 52-21. to Their most dominant offensive performance since they beat Western Carolina back in week two. Uh, And we also saw a familiar face that we haven't seen in quite some while. So you can take him off the milk carton. Spencer Rattler got in a little, got in a few reps. He went five for five for 67 yards and a touchdown of his own. So, yes, for those of you wondering, he is still in Oklahoma and has not entered the transfer portal yet. Uh, So uh, they maintain their, they retain their number Four ranking number five Ohio State. Uh, they beat number twenty Penn State thirty three to twenty four. Um, I don't know. It was a little shaky. It was a little shaky. It was a little shaky. Uh, they wound up dropping to number six. We'll get into the reason why in just a second. The next game right here, Michigan number six, Michigan. This was supposed to be Michigan's year. They were looking really good, uh, but Harbaugh going to do what Harbaugh is going to do. Number six, Michigan drops one, their first one of the year, to number eight, Michigan State. And let me tell you, I have not seen Michigan State look this good in a very long time. They're looking exceptionally dominant. They're going to make a big push in the Big Ten. Uh, We still don't know. It's still kind of wide open. We still don't know who it is that's going to stand up against uh, Ohio State. And uh, in the, in the uh, conference championship, but right now you've got uh, Michigan State. They got Kenneth Walker the third is now generating Heisman buzz. Young man, twenty three carries, one hundred ninety seven yards, five touchdowns. Michigan winds up falling to number nine. Michigan State leapfrogs Ohio State to get in the number five spot. Um, so that begs the question here. Can we still trust Ohio State? Do we still trust Ohio State? I mean, you guys can let me know in the comments. And once again, those of you that are just joining, welcome to this week in SEC football, the week nine review. I am your host, Mr. Fingers, uh, one third, <laughs> now one third, not one half, one third of the cast. Uh, my boy, Sean Spencer uh, and Colin, they are watching NFL football today. Colin's uh Colin, he and I both diehard Braves fans hoping the Bravos pull out another win. One game away from World Series Championship. We are going to go ahead and put that in the atmosphere. We're really hopeful for that. Gentlemen, I hope you're watching. Thank you for being a part of this. This show, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, brought to us courtesy of DJG Enterprises and GreekGans.com, your one-stop shop. You can get these beautiful insulated tumblers right here. This one was made specifically for my fraternity, but you can get these made in your school team colors. You can get mascots put on them. You can get logos put on them, whatever you want to put on it. Um, go Gators, go Dogs, Woo Pig, Suey, Road Tide Roll, whatever you want. They can make these for you. And they also make big, beautiful custom Afghans. Uh, so back to our segment. Back to our segment, and I just realized I forgot to put the information out there. Uh, you can email Darius Jerome, that is D-A-R-R-I-U-S, Jerome, 
at gmail.com for the tumblers. You can visit GreekGans.com. You see in the crawl right there on the bottom of the screen, going across the screen, that is where you can go to get your Afghans if you need those. Um, so we're going to keep this thing moving along. Do we trust Ohio State still? Well, Ohio State has been the creme de la creme of the Big Ten for quite some time now. Um, and there's no denying that they are a good team. There's no denying that they're, they're, they're pretty much the, the best of the best in the Big Ten. This year, though, a little shaky. Week two lost to Oregon. Um, which kind of knocked them off their rocker. C.J. Stroud was supposed to be a Heisman favorite coming into the season. Haven't heard as much buzz about him since then, but still, he was supposed to be a Heisman favorite, and week two, they wind up losing to Oregon. Um, but here's what we're looking at. They've only played two ranked teams so far. Now, I know that doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot because – a lot of people put a lot of stock in that. And I know that's what the AP voters and the coaches and, and all of that, that's what they put uh, the stock in when they do the rankings. That's also something that's looked at very heavily when you're talking about CFP rankings, but there are some teams that are not necessarily ranked that are scrappy as crap that will knock you, knock you on your took uh Saturday in and Saturday out if you don't come in there correct so the two uh the ranked teams that they played were penn state who they beat yesterday number 20 penn state and um penn state was essentially within one score the entire game they were within one score that game was very close uh i know that the final score was 33 to 24 but penn state managed to hold Ohio State to three field goals and one touchdown in the second half. So it was those couple of field goals that made the difference in a win and a loss for Ohio State. But let's look at who they played so far. So you want to ask the question, but who have they played? So they played Minnesota. But Minnesota, to be fair, Minnesota is leading the Big Ten West. They're 6-2, and two, they're 4-1 and one in conference play. Um, they were neck and neck during that game until – Ohio State managed to put together a 14-point fourth quarter. They played Oregon. Now, Oregon was the one loss. That's the blemish on the record. Oregon is ranked uh, was ranked 12th when they played in Week 2. Oregon is currently ranked 7th with the new rankings being released a little earlier today, and it pretty much locked to win the Pac-12. That was a 7-point loss. Now, the rest of the schedule... Now they look dominant. They still have they're still averaging 47 points a game, Ohio State is. But here's who they played besides those two teams. They played uh Tulsa, who is three and five. They played the Akron Zips, who is who are two and six. And both of those are uh I think the both of those are G5 schools. They played Rutgers, who's at four and four, Maryland, who is a very respectable five and three. Uh, and Indiana, who is two and six. Now, here's the remainder of their schedule. Three and six Nebraska with Scott Frost still on the hot seat. Purdue, who is five and three. Now, that's the one that Ohio State really needs to be careful for. I know they're probably looking forward towards the Michigan game at the end of the season, but you've still got Michigan State, who's ranked above you at five, and you've got Purdue who can be a playoff run killer. Purdue has knocked off a lot of teams in the last four or five years that had championship hopes. Just ask Notre Dame. They did it to Notre Dame a couple years ago. Uh, I think uh, Purdue knocked off Iowa uh, last week, week before. So if you, if you don't have the juice to go out, and it's the same thing I said about Oklahoma. If you don't have the juice to go out week in and week out and knock somebody in the mouth when you know you're playing in a conference and you know you have a schedule where you're going to play teams, especially this year, who are new and improved, you uh, who are new and improved. Uh, I just mentioned that uh, Kenny Walker. Kenny Walker ran for 197 yards. Uh, Ohio State's offense is averaging their defense. They're giving up. 280 yards average 
per game on the ground. So you, if you can't go out and knock somebody in the mouth, if your offense can't generate those numbers at some point, it is going to come back and bite you in the butt. If your defense is not good enough, You'd see what I did there, those of you that are – I'm coming back around to you, Georgia detractors. We're going to get back with you in a minute. If your defense can't get their offense off the field, your offense has got to go out there and run rough shot over their defense. It's basically what that comes down to. Yeah, they're ranked number 16 in the country in rush defense, which is not bad. But like I said, they're giving up 280 yards a game. So do we still trust Ohio State? I do think they'll probably wind up at the very least playing in the Big Ten Championship. Uh, and if they do get to the championship, it's good lock. It's a good lock that they will more than likely win the conference. But will it be enough to impress the CFP voters come time for them to announce those rankings at the end of week 12? That Ohio State, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, keeping this thing moving, those of you just joining us again, welcome. This week, SEC football. Mr. Fingers here on behalf of Sean Spencer and my homeboy Colin. We'll be on tomorrow discussing the whole SEC rundown. We got some other notable losses in the top 25. Number nine, Iowa. Iowa looked like they were on an absolute complete roll after they held off Penn State and they turn around and they lose to Purdue. And now they got embarrassed by Wisconsin by score 27 to 7 they fall to number 19 number 10 old miss we've taught the matt corral this matt corral that matt corral probably the front runner to win the heisman they lose at jordan hare against number 18 auburn 20 to 31 they really weren't in the game i know it was an 11 point loss which really is only a two score game and old miss is, has been capable of generating the offense to make up that difference but they really weren't in the game um, from from Giddy up. Uh, Matt Corral went out with an ankle injury, comes running back out on the field three or four plays later. The next offensive sequence, I don't know if that was some kind of choreographed. Yes, here's my conspiracy theory for the week. Conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory. Um, that uh, the the that that they choreographed him getting hurt coming back out and leading the team to victory which would be his defining heisman moment because kind of hard to uh you know he was the front runner from he he was he not from the giddy up actually spencer rattler was the front runner but he was up in the discussion and then caleb williams jumps up into the discussion and now you got beach on robinson and now you have this kid kenneth walker the third from he sounds that sounds like that sounds like that definitely sounds like somebody works at a law firm. Thank you for calling the law offices of Kenneth Walker III. How may I direct your call? Now you've got Kenneth Walker out here, just a world beater at running back down at uh, Michigan State. Uh, so, yes, they uh, they fall to 15 from number 10. They are definitely going to need some help. Number one, they're going to have to win out at this point. They can't afford any more losses because they were right behind Bama, nipping at Bama's heels, and they're going to need some help from whoever is on Bama's schedule, but that's not looking very likely Looked at who, looking at who Bama is is uh, stacked up against. The one game that I do anticipate is going to give Auburn a little bit of uh, trouble is the Iron Bowl, because they're playing against an Auburn team at this point that has zero to lose. Auburn is not necessarily in the running for winning the SEC West, but they got nothing to lose. They're not going to make the CFP unless the entire all of FBS just completely crumbles around them over the course of the next few weeks. Doubtful, but right now they're not going to get to the SEC. They're probably not going to get to the SEC championship. They're definitely not going to get to the college football championship game. They got nothing to lose. So they're going to go out there and they're going to give them the what for. I don't know how it's going to turn out, but it's always it's always going to be an adrenaline fueled game between the two teams. I, I can't think of a bowl game that doesn't have more memorable last second win moments. Kick six is the one that still sticks out in my mind right now. Most recently keeping this thing moving along. Uh, let's see who we got now. Auburn is now up at number 12, by the way. Oh, Kentucky. Number 12, Kentucky. Mm. 
it did not go well at Mississippi for Kentucky last night, ladies and gentlemen. The the 14 point loss, 17 to 31 to the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. Will Rogers, I've been preaching this kid all year long. 36 of 39. Do the math on that. I didn't bother to do it. Do the math on that. It's absolutely insane. He wound up finishing that game with 344 yards. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, the I don't I didn't do the math on it, but the percentage of his past completions is now a uh, top five NCAA record uh, for pass completion percentage during a football game during the regular season. Uh, the loss by the Wildcats also helped the dogs out because now that means that the dogs have clinched the SEC East. They will be going to Atlanta to face whoever wins in the West. I know everybody's saying it's Alabama, but there's still some games left, so we'll have to wait that one out. Kentucky winds up falling to number 18. Number 17, Pitt. Pitt, what happened? We were rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. They wind up dropping one at 34 to 38 at home against Miami. Miami? Miami, really? Come on, Pitt. Come on, Pitt. You lost to Miami. We were rooting for you. Anyway, I'm not going to dog them too badly because, hey, Georgia's season is not over either, so I don't want to put any bad juju in the air at all. As a Georgia sports fan, I know how this thing goes. I'm wanting to ride this wave as long as we can ride it. Number 19, SMU, was really making some noise. Uh, they wound up dropping one, 37 to 44 against Houston. They dropped to number 23. Number 21, San Diego State University. Their first loss of the season at home against Fresno State, 20 to 30. Uh, they fall from the polls. Number 22, Iowa State, still nipping at everybody's heels because that's a very tight knit race in the Big 12 to see who's going to the championship. You've got undefeated Oklahoma at the top, you got Oklahoma State right behind them, you got one loss Baylor. Uh, one loss Baylor right along with one loss Oklahoma State and a few two loss teams. They're all nipping at each other's heels. Iowa State winds up uh, losing 31 to 38 to West Virginia. So now we have Pitt, San Diego State and Iowa State are now all out of the top 25. That's where we stand with that. That is your rundown on your top 25 notable losses. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's basically going to do it for this review today i didn't intend to come on and do over 30 minutes i try to keep it to 10 but hey it is what it is thank you guys so much for tuning in uh make sure that you tune in tomorrow night for this week in sec football the week nine review the week 10 preview and we will definitely be talking about the cfp rankings because those will be out by the time we come on so on behalf of my co-host, Sean and Colin, I am Mr. Fingers coming to you live from Zagnif Central. Appreciate you. Holla. Be sure to like and subscribe for content and more on your new home for podcasts and independent music on the Zagnif One Radio Network.